We've got to see this as an organism, a body, and not just an organization. Catch the Vision podcast. Leadership tips, powerful lessons, and inspiration. It's not that far, but way in the future, everything in your life is going to be done by a robot. Dude, no, it's not. No, it's not. Here's your hosts, John Tremble and Mike Cornwell. Hi, I'm Mike Cornwell. Hey. With me, John Tremble. This is Catch the Vision. <laughs> what are we talking about today, John? Kick us off. Well, we talked about this, and, and I was just saying that I think a little bit of review might help some people that have been watching us or just started to watch us. Uh, a while back, um, a couple of months ago or so, I came to Mike, and we were talking about leadership a little bit, and I said, we, let's do something together about leadership because I see in this area a lack of leadership. And what I meant by that is I saw a void of le someone that would come forward and say the things that I've been saying and I've been seeing in my life that is needful in this area. And I mentioned the thing called Baptist uh, thought or Baptist... Uh, the Baptist way. Or a Baptist... Yeah. And, and I didn't mean bad. I just meant that the Baptist way of things and the Baptist doctrine is a typical example of the paradigm that we live in where... The pastor is the chief, and he does everything, and then you come and listen to him for an hour, and see you later. And maybe a couple songs, maybe some really good singing, but really, it's see you later after the hour. And, we, and as we talked about before, it's not necessarily just Baptists. It's no, a, it's no, actually no. just They're the just general a, way of running a church. It's just church. that around here, there are a lot of Baptist yeah. uh, mindsets yeah. and churches and stuff, and so... I use that word because that's the main. I mean, if yeah. I was in South America, I would say the Catholic. Yeah, that's right. You know, but but it's not. There's no Baptist down there. We're, we're generally the same. The same. The same discussion. The same problem. The yeah. same. The yeah. same problem is there's a void of what I see as a need for someone to say, "Hey, there's more, and there's there's much much more." then we realize that we can live as a Christian and we can have so much more, especially in the area of the Holy Spirit leading us rather than a paradigm lead. Oh, this is the way we do church. This is the way we do fellowship. This is No, no, no. The Bible gives us some really clear pictures, I think, of, of what church, the church, should be doing and could be doing and what the church needs to know that we have in Christ and the Christ in us. And I said something, by the way, on Facebook. Some some of you might have seen it. I'm not going around praying that God changes the storm. I'm looking at it and saying, you and me and me and you, I speak to the storm to break down. It was at a category five, and it's going to get worse, and break down to a category two or so or less, and that that will be less damage and much better for the people, my family in Florida. And that's what I was doing. Then when it hit land, it was a Category 2, and nobody could believe it. They also have uh, some real uh, statistical facts that happened to that storm that shouldn't happen to that storm. Oh, Mil I see what Milton. You're saying. And I'm saying there comes a time. The Bible says that even the winds in the ocean obeyed him. Jesus spoke to the storm, go away, and it went away. And that, oh, even wind and, and, and water obey him. And then he walked on water because... The final name, the final word on this stuff is what Jesus is saying. And they're saying throughout Revelation. Now, you, people get in Revelation and they think, Revelation, oh, that's what's going to happen in the end times. You don't understand that the Revelation says two things that are facts. One is it's a revelation of Jesus. And secondly, it says in the seven churches that he talked about, listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, I'm not talking about theology. I don't want to get too theological in that. I'm just saying that if we're stuck in a paradigm, we need to hear God. We need to hear God's way. We need to read what it really was like and what it, re what it was, like Mike talked about, breaking of bread and that kind of stuff together, is the church. That's, that's actually what we're supposed to be doing. And that's where yeah. people are touched and people are caring about one another and loving one another. And wonderful things come of that if they have Christ in their life. So can I, I can I hop in here and yeah and hop in there. So um, I'm going to add my preamble now that you've yeah. added your preamble. So um, <laughs> I like that. I, I, call it. I, I like that he went first because 
um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the same thing that you said, right. but saying nothing like you just said. Right. So the reason why I came and started doing this podcast with John is because I saw the same thing, but in an abstract sense. So the lack of leadership in its in generalityness. And uh, what John is describing is like it's 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 like a fleshed out version of the stuff that I've seen. It's the same thing. It's but it's it's kind of different because it's even more holistic. Um, not that I would consider everything they said not to be holistic, but it, it's in a, it's in a more general sense. I see that there is a lack of people willing to take charge of like their household. Just down to that small level, uh, that people are unwilling to take charge and and wait for other people to help them, like, for example, in the storm um, or when to not and what to do, that people are following some sort of crazy script. And I see this in my, 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 my business ventures and I see, you know, trying to encourage people in, in my experiences. I talk very explicitly about like what leadership is is in its elementary essence that if you were to call it like if you were to describe it like a scientist would describe a molecule a molecule contains you know or you know atoms it contains protons neutrons or whatever the the atomic structure of leadership is about influencing action behaviors and beliefs for the purposes of achieving a vision that's its abstract its abstract point so when John, every time John brings up, for example, he brings up Christ, Christ is trying to lead us in a particular direction. And the way that he does that is the model he describes why things work. So the, I don't spend a lot of time talking about Christianity on this, although I, I will because it, it does map to a lot of things that are important to talk about. But the thing that brought me to following Christ is the fact that his ways are not the ways that people use. However, people will use those ways and they're really successful with them. And so there's something that's going on and that drew me in. Yeah. And uh, when you say that, you're really getting to in, more into specifics on certain things like business, like life, like doing stuff. Yeah, like when that. I get into the details, and I the, am going to talk about yeah, this. And yeah, those, yeah. Deta- those details are very important. I, and I'm not against them. I, I, I see what you're saying. However, I, I see... I think we both saw the frustration that that people are. Let me speak to it this way: there are some that have people leadership willing to get into some of these specifics and give some guidance and some prophetic, not profiting, but pr- prophetic insight for us to live in and to enjoy, and we're not listening to them. Yeah, and one of the reasons why I believe is we are under a some the Christians call it principality and power. We're under some kind of aura of of uh, you know the Bible says uh, the, the the whole world lieth in the wicked one, and he's the prince of the power of the air. There is a certain kind of spiritual uh, what do I want to say blockage to people that doesn't allow them to see these things and well, you and that's why I'm saying j- j- we need to catch the vision of it the bigger picture the bigger picture is, transcends that problem John the reason why and I'll speak both in the abstract but I will use the Christian metaphor the sheep have been scattered they've been literally like right in the middle they've been blown away they've been told all sorts of things and the kind of uh, the, the only way I can look at it, I was thinking about it when I was driving home yesterday, is people are on the, like, they're following the empire. And what the <laughs> empire is telling them the is a bunch of things. Forces. And so, like, and here's a perfect example. So I've, I've, I've been enough alternative lifestyle Stuff. groups long enough to see, like, some other perspectives. And I don't mean... I mean, alternative, like it could be like preppers and stuff like that, like different perspectives on that way pe- people see things. And one of the things that I'll never forget somebody saying, and I was like, you know what? Clear my eyes. Like, that's a really good point you just made there, which was something like you're talking about the unemployment rate. And so the normal thing that a, a normal person in this empire, the way that they think is unemployment should be zero. In other words, whatever that number is above zero is bad. And so the the more sophisticated managers are like, well, no, it needs to be in this meaty room of like four to two, you know, some porridge perfect. And 
And so they'll, they'll bring up like statistics. And it's funny because depending on how much you're attached to the empire, certain statistics don't matter to you. But they'll talk about that the rate of unemployment in males is growing dramatically and the rate of unemployment in females has dropped precipitously. So, you know, the empire says that's amazing. But then <laughs> normal empire people think that that's really bad. But let's talk about an alternative perspective about this because this goes to the, the Baptist way and all this kind of stuff that everybody's been scattered in their thinking. Some people believe that pe the, that the idea that 50% of the households, you know, back in the day, supposedly men went to work and then women stayed home, that the, the empire believes that's amazing that 50% of the people started coming, they came to the workforce and that's amazing. Another portion believe that that is the worst thing that has ever happened to humanity because all of a sudden now 50% more of the people have to go out and go serve some system when before 50% of the people were actually more grounded to earth. And even before that, not every person went out to go work a job. It was more like 10, 20%. And so another perspective, and this is just an example, is that the, the kind of thinking that people think across the board has to be questioned and checked. They think that this is the way it should be and that this is the right way. And I'm telling you, everybody knows that it's not the right way, but they don't know what it is. And so they're flopping all over the place. Yeah. Well, you know, this is interesting because, you know, the fact that we're reviewing in this and talking about this, it could cause us to see how drastically we see things differently However, I don't see it that way. Yeah, sure. I see it as you're looking through this vision and I'm looking through this vision. Yeah, that's right. Uh, not vision, but, you know, uh, vision device, periscope, microscope, whatever. And we need to... We Te got, telescope. Actually, it's technically microscopes that we see this thing. But we need telescope. And this is what we I'm do, saying. Yeah, I agree. We need the telescopic view, too. You know, I, I, someone came to my house and said, this is a nice house and this is in a nice location and blah, 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 blah. I said, let me take to the back porch. They went to the back porch and they could see the beautiful hill up there and the yeah. house up there and everything. I said, see, now that's a telescopic view. Now we look differently to them. Now we suddenly go, you know, that's the bigger picture. You're just yeah. microscoping my house. Well, but the telescope. I, 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 I actually want to sort of fight with you on this just a little bit. Because you said something that I would say, yeah, you go back on the back porch and you use your eyeballs and you look out and you see the majesty. The problem with the telescope is there are people using telescopes. And that just is, telescopes. That is the Elon Musk. You listen, I listened to his little thing and he said, yeah, they're talking they're only about on the telescope, oh, yeah. way out in the future. Yeah. Uh, it's not that far, but way out in the future. Everything in your life is going to be done by a robot. Dude, no, it's not. No, it's not. You see this That's telescope. Right. You're seeing this right. fake future. That's and right. the way, the, the literally, if you got your eye off that telescope and you looked around, there would be carnage everywhere. Yeah. Well, that is, is the problem. This is, I agree with you. This is the problem that we have. I, there's some just telescope. Yes. Elon Musk. Only telescope. They need to get some microscoping going on. And then the guys with just the True. microscope dissect and bisect stuff and are killing it. They need to have a little telescope to see the big picture and the, and the majesty out yeah, there. Yeah, I would agree there. You talked about. So we got a twofold problem in a sense there that not enough people. And I think that the, the, the uh, answer is you got to have leadership or. If you smite the shepherd, the sheep are scattered. Yes. And so we got to find the right shepherd and go ahead with him. Otherwise, everybody does what's right in their own eyes. And we've already had that scenario through the medieval times. Everybody did what they wanted so, to do. And one powerful religion, the Roman Catholic religion, yeah. uh, took over oh, and man. killed 50 million people. So somewhere along the line, we got to find the truth and follow it. And I know this is churning, Mike. I will. I definitely. I'm not going to comment on it because they will turn into a whole other podcast about how right you are about that. Yeah, I don't want to get in there. But I, 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 that's theological so, and it's but, historical. But, I, but I, I want to ask you this question though, because the kind of the way you're talking about is is finding the shepherd. Now I don't know. Are you talking about Jesus, or are you talking about something more more? Broad, in, in the con broad. I mean, more, Jesus is the sh good shepherd, the, but the reason why, so the reason why I asked that question, uh, it's not like a loaded question, but the reason why, because is when I think about this podcast and I think about who's watching here now, I see them as the shepherds and I see equipping them as the shepherds that they're the ones that, 
They need to start to gather sheep, even if they're not the ultimate person, you know, the bigger leader that's got the way. They've got to at least get the sheep together. Now, did you hear that? Because that's really what we talked about later on when we talked about this whole Christian situation that we have here. Those are our believers, followers of Jesus. It talks about us as a body, not an organization. Yes. And until we see that by that which every joint supplies, don't if we don't get a hold of the fact that we need each other, you can't. The hand can't say to the foot, "I don't need you." Well, how are you going to get somewhere? Or the hand to the eye, "I don't need you." Well, how are you going to see? So we've got to see this as an organism, a body, and not just an organization. Because to change an organization is like we're a little rudder, and this whole big ocean liner turns at you know. Uh, negative three degrees. So did you did you hear recently? Like so, um, I just saw that yesterday the Justice Department came out and you know suspend your politics for two seconds. But the yeah. Justice Department <laughs> the Justice Department came out yesterday and they said that they basically indicted criminally indicted TD Bank for basically doing wide scale money laundering. And so the more that they talked, the more that I was like, okay. So I don't know to be to be fair. I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak about something concrete that I heard, but I'm not going to assume that it is the case. Or I'm going to assume that it's the case, knowing that there may be more going on there than what they're telling me. Oh, wow. So just... It I'm always just, is. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm using this example. But the that organization, from their description, is so utterly leader leaderless and jacked up that it's like no surprise. It actually looks like so many corporations and so many experiences that humans are having because they are willing to get in and knowingly know that they're helping criminal conduct, but yet they won't do anything about it because I guess they're helpless. I guess they don't feel empowered. I guess they don't care, but that's what they're doing. And so there's all these like internal emails that they were sending out like, or messages going like, isn't this money laundering? And like they're replying, like it's literally the definition of money laundering. Yeah, and they're and they're doing this stuff anyways. That is the world we're living in right now. That's one of the biggest banks that's out there, and the the reality is is people are starting to engage in these kinds of behaviors because they are scattered. Yeah, and I think that you know what I'm in my shepherd's heart. I concerned about the people watching this. Uh, we both are. Yeah. To get the vision, the bigger picture, it says catch the vision. And I, I still fall back to this thing, two things. One is, until you get that revelation, uh, you know, I'm talking to the moon, for one thing, because you don't have the big picture. Secondly, um, there are certain factors that help us see something more than what we have now. And when we see that, we have actually, yes. in order to see it, you have to hear it. Here, here's the, how it works. Someone tells us about it and we go, oh, and then you see it and then you go for it. But there are people out there saying, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything. And they, because if they know that if someone hears this, even way up in the government or way up in the world, the attitude and the worldly things about finance and all that stuff. Yeah. They don't want it said because if it's said, someone will go, oh, I see what you're what you're actually saying. Uh, and my eyes now see what you're actually what I'm actually hearing. I see it. And then they go for it. Then they deal with it. And so my concern is if there's nobody saying this stuff to catch the vision of a greater thing than what we're living in, there's much better, greater things. Uh, no one, if we don't say it, no one's going to see it. And if no one sees it, no one's going to do anything about it. And that's my concern. That's my heart. Now, so what you're telling me is, is I need to go and, and boost this. And so we can get more, more views so people can see this. I think it's important because this is important somewhere along the line, you've got to hear what we're saying. And if you hear it, you'll catch it. And if you catch yeah. it, you see it, that's catching, seeing and you'll do it. You'll go for it. Or you'll begin to pay attention to what we're saying so that you can grasp 
what we're saying. I'll definitely say so. By the way, we're not doing this with pictures. This is not pictograph. This is hearing. This is oh, yeah. speaking out. It's not pictograph. Look at this picture, and then look at this picture, and we hope by these pictures you'll get somewhere. No, 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 no. You have to hear us. You're, you're actually right, John. Um, what I'm thinking about, like as you're saying this stuff, is I'm thinking about how this stuff works. Like when when I or somebody else like caught the vision, again, that revelation, they hear something. What what I think happens is it all clicks. They've got they've got this disjointed understanding of something, and all of a sudden it was like, let me let me circle that for you. And then all of a sudden, what you're saying, you're like, oh, got it. Like now I got it. So a couple of weeks ago, I talked about that. I watched this uh, video series, and they took all these these different elements uh, to like the Christian church, and they were like. This is the origin of them. This is how they all kind of fit together. And all of a sudden I was like, mind blown. Yeah. And from that, I started doing more reading. I started reading things outside of the Bible, the the early writings of the church and all of us and did, and did a bunch of research and which wasn't important. Like why spend any time doing that? You wouldn't normally do that, but you started gaining an understanding. You go, you do your own research. You start to look into it. And then all of a sudden you now have something inside of you that is like a rock of truth that when you start to impart on other people, which by the way, this is a frustration we were talking about just before we turned this for yeah. record, you're going to become frustrated over the fact that when you go and you try to bring people who do not have the whole vision or more of the vision, maybe not the whole vision, but you, you're bringing a rock to, of truth to them. More of the vision. They did not earn that. No. They did not earn it, but you're giving it to them anyways. That's called grace. That's yeah, called, that's called. Yeah, that, there's some that, grace there. there. There's there's that, but so um, the way you catch the vision is you have to hear it. It has to connect with things that you've actually done and you've seen. You've got to then go act on it and build that vision yourself. Yeah. See, you you may have looked at this guy on these video series. You may have looked at the video, yeah. but he was telling you something and you were listening. Yeah, I had nothing and to do with the video. When you video. began to hear it, you go, oh, oh. You see, in the hearing of it, you begin to see. That's the that's the way it is. There's no way other way around it. That's why we have two ears and two eyes. We, we hear and then we go, oh, like you said, and we see it. And then once you have that revelation, it's over. You can't go like unsee it. No, you can't unsee it. You can't unsee it. So what happens is it changes. And this is what we're talking about. We want to say, hey, there's a problem out there and there's a bigger picture and we're trying to share with you the bigger picture. Do we got it all together? No. No, definitely not. No, no. I mean, the fact that... And that's not what the podcast is about. I mean, if you want to know proof of that, I could not have come here a couple weeks ago and been like, John, like, whoa. That couldn't, that couldn't happen. <laughs> But um, well, I see a lot of things from you too. This is what we we glean from one another, yeah. and that uh, uh, your perspective and my perspective are different. But yeah, that's the reason we want you to know we're not we're not negating that perspective. We're saying yes, we're saying yes, yes. This is part of the big picture, and some of some people say no, no. I want my comfortable little view of how I view things. Well, we're trying to shoot the trumpet call and say, look, there's more. There's much more, and it's a bigger picture than you even imagine. You know, I sorry, I just had like a little revelation based on the things that you were saying earlier. You're you're right about. I was thinking about the telescope metaphor. Um, I don't like it because I just think of like how tiny this thing is, <laughs> how far. Like you're missing all this, but sometimes it's good. It is good to because we're talking about the details. The, I, it's funny. The devils in the details actually is a double meaning. There's two meanings to that. Yes, One there is, is, yes, there is if you don't look in the details, there's going to be problems because you need to look in the details like a contract and make sure that those things in the contract. Yes. But then there's a flip side to it is the devil's in the details to bog, and if you you, down. It, to bog you down that if you're going to spend all these times in the details, you're going to miss the big picture. Man, so there, right. there's a lot to be said about that. But so sometimes it is good to kind of skip this. And I was thinking um, like Isaiah three, I was talking about this before. Why do I find that book so compelling? And what am I trying to get out of it? I'm trying to get a lot of things, but one thing I'm trying to get, I'm actually trying to understand what's going to happen next. Yeah. What's come what where we are now and what's going to happen next. 
or ma- like making it's not just about making sense about right now because there's a, there's some pretty deep critiques about reading like it's like a uh, is it really a prophet if all they're doing is saying like they're explaining why now from the past? That's not really that's not a prophet. A prophet is they say something's going to happen in the future and the thing then happens. Yeah, right? so and then people that say that say they're a prophet. They're not a prophet. They're observing something and they're saying this is what's going to happen. I can do that. I mean, some yeah. of these prophets online. Yeah, true. Uh, like uh, I don't, I really don't want to give a name, but I got one I really pet peeve with. I really don't like. Well, I have two. I got two, <laughs> but. They say this and say that, and people, oh, he's a prophet. Look, I came up with that conclusion on my own. I didn't a prophet. But there are prophets that see telescopically and speak into the microscopic situation and say, look, you you telescopic guys need to look, get a little more microscopic on what's going on. That's basically what I'm saying. And secondly, um, what's going to happen in the future that you're talking about is we're going to get more scattered if God doesn't provide shepherds that can lead flocks into the right proper attitude and mode, modus operandi that they, that he really was talking about. And that brings me back to saying we're a body, not an organization. This is the thing we want to get nailed down to do that. One, two, three, four. And then we do one, two, three, four. Then we can go to five, six, seven, eight. And we can't even get to square one and and the, the reason why is we're trying to make this organizational. This should be a, a revelation for some of you. You can't only make it organizational because you'll miss the heart of the body. The body functions differently, and it's not like an organization. An organization is great. The Billy Graham organization, Samaritan and Perth, they're it's, doing great things, but... but that's just an organization. The organism inside that, we don't see, but there's a lot of organism happening. And that's important for us to understand. I, and otherwise, I think we're trying to apply principles from certain organizational things to the organism. And the body's going, I can't, I can't wear this armor. I can't wear these clothes. I have to be me. And so there is a place where shepherds can work with real people and get to real results. But I will say, I'm, I am I agree with you 100%. Totally inspired by it. But I will say, sometimes you, the, the shepherd, absolutely, in order to make it where you got to go, you got to get sheep to act completely differently. Uh, you, you, that's you, the problem with the shepherd. <laughs> you've got you've to take the behavior of, I am a timid thing that is uh that is uh going to uh peel out here there and everywhere what's over there what's over there and you got to say that i know that that's your that is your natural way but you can't do that no more you have to you know and we live in the era that you know this is some of what we're talking about before we turn this on that like just far and wide people are truly giving in to their their, their human nature and believing that it is so good. but in re- and, and what they're doing is they're casting off all these various things as they're so evil, but they're really not. And so, for example, I, I, t- I tell people about this story yes. of like, just use your intuition, okay? I went to a um, USDA, not USDA, uh, FSA, a far- like the Farmer Services Administration building, in New Orleans about 10 years ago. I was there to take a, a like a landscaping test. Even though I was the CEO of a, a like a like a nursery, I wanted to get this anyways and try to encourage some other people to get it. But anyway, so I went and get that that cert. And I'm sitting there looking around on the wall and I'm seeing all these pictures of the organization every single year since like 1920 or something. Yeah. So that's super fun to look at. And so I'll never forget, I was looking at one that was like 1935 or 1940 or something like that, right next to 2000 and like 16. And they're right <laughs> next to each other. So you get to see it. You're like, A, B, A, B, A. Every single person there was fit. They were wearing suits. And even the 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 scientists, they had suits, uh, like science suits. I've never even seen that before. So they were like white lab coats, but yet they were still like a suit. 
So the people who are obviously the business types, they all they all had like hats on. They looked very fancy. They looked nice. You then look next to it, and it was this hosh posh of random looking people that were wildly overweight. They were wearing their clothes were falling off them. They were wearing yeah. uh, like dirty blue jeans, <laughs> sweatpants, sweat like like uh, memed sweatshirts. Dude, that was the same organization. And you and look at that. And so some people will look at that and go like, oh, look at the great diversity. Dude, there was no diversity. They all looked alike. They looked like trash. They showed up every single day. With They show up every day looking like that and with that kind of mentality. When on the other side, they showed up like that. That is a leadership problem. This yeah. is a real problem. And it's perva- it's so pervasive. It's an Every holler, it's on every street, it's on every single state, it is everywhere. Yep. There may be pockets in islands of leadership that's happening. And what's even worse, which is why I love your message and I, and I like working with you, even the leaders that are out there don't, they're not expanding their vision and they're still, they're staying in their domain. So they're like, I am a leader in technology, I'm a leader in business. And so all of their morality, all of their perspective in life is this narrow vision, and it drives me crazy. With with, with blinders with on. With blinders. The ho- horse blind, you know, like those horses have, to follow one line of thinking, one line of uh, delivery, and that's all they do. That they, they're, yes. they're stuck in there. That's why I think, for example, so I agree, you know what it, what a leader really needs to do? They need to be they need to be comfortable getting in the microscope and being able to go. I technically know what those things are. I know what they are. Not, hey, expert, uh, tell me what that is. They need to be able to actually be able to do stuff. They then need to be able to look out into the future by looking through the telescope. And they need to be able to look with their own eyes in a 360-degree view. Yeah, I agree with that. Only thing is that they need to do this. If they can't do it, they need to see the people that have the gifts to do that. We have to recognize the gifts in the body that help us see the microscopic problem. Some people are able to see better. Like like you, Mike, are more didactic. I don't know if you know what that is, but a teacher of certain things is didactic. They they have some kind of uh, understanding of line upon line, precept upon precept. They, yeah, have, sure. they have some kind of uh, building blocks that help them see what we're talking about. And there are those that haven't got a clue. They haven't got, you say it to them and they look at me like three heads. And I'm like, or deers in a headlight. <laughs> in headlights, well, you know. So, I, I, so, again, we still see this problem. Here, here's, here's where I might quibble with. I, might quibble with. I don't want to get too far in these because I generally agree. But I, 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 I'm reluctant to give up the fact that giving too much sight over to other people, a leader needs to be able to know whether or not what somebody is telling them is sound. And it's not just personal recommend. It's not just personal rapport. A leader must do that. In in other words, they've got to be knowledgeable. They don't need to be, they definitely don't need to be the expert, but they absolutely need to know enough because the problem, the real problem we have now with like the Elon Musk's and and those types is they, um, Elon Musk is not the best example, but they actually, Good like, example, Bill, Bill Gates is actually a better example. He doesn't know crap about anything and he's floating on these clouds and he just has these random experts. And so what comes out of their mouth is literally not true. Yeah, it, and it, I see this stuff all the time where, and I don't mean it's so, um, like I hear from time to time, like I work with non-technical people and they'll go say something like, they'll miscommunicate the, like the accuracy of our status of where we are on a project. So they might say we're a little further ahead than we are. It's technically not accurate, but they're not far off from it. These people are wildly out in the clouds. Yes. And the reason is, is because they don't know and they're managing such gigantic swaths of people and they're managing. They're not leading these people. They're managing gigantic well, they're swaths trying of to people, manage it. trying to manage and they don't have enough penetration down. What they do is they just walk around from one factory to another. And then some person comes, you know, some High level managers walking them along and going, look how amazing and pretty and inspirational all this is. That's what their life is like. And there's people out there like deer in headlights that that haven't got a clue that this car 
this vehicle is going to hit them and kill them if they don't wake up and get out of the way of the car. So, yeah. So, I mean, there's all kinds of analogies here. That's true. But my desire, I mean, my hope or our hope is if you don't see the big picture, if you don't see the vision of being needing needing leaders to do the things they need to do, mm. then you you are floating. You're floating. And and that's that's the thing we don't want. We got enough floaters. I have a floater in my eye as a matter of fact. <laughs> but uh you know, they're all I just see. floating and no one is saying no one is giving the clarion call, look, there's more than just settling for this tiny little world that you live in, this tiny microscopic that you live in. And so you need to take your eye off the microscope and get on the telescope, and yeah, then I you agree. go, oh, out there is, oh, I see there's much more out there. Yeah, that's one thing we need to say. But the telescopic people that are only telescope, we need to get them off and onto the microscope and look at the situation here. And, and that's what we're doing. We're trying to share... In this area that we're in, which is true throughout the world, yeah, it is. There's a la- but I I also see this. I also see this. God is not stupid. He's not mocked, and he's not unaware of what's going on. So he's providing people. He, he always works with men and women. He always works with people to say, look. There's more out there, and we're willing to look at the more and have the more come into the situation. Yeah. And that's where that's where I feel the lack of leadership is happening in this area. There aren't leaders saying, because of, of cost. I mean, it's going to cost them to let go of control. I said it. You know, they like control because if they control the situation, they feel safe. But you're not safe if you, if you, if you don't wake up to the reality that uh, we we can't just be scattered. We have to wake up to the fact that there is more out there than what we're just giving. It's a great leader in this church. We know a church, a great guy, great leader. We we like him and everything, but he doesn't allow any let control of let go of any control, and so the same paradigm happens over and over and over. And and we're trying to say, hey. There's a bigger picture out there. There's a there's a greater vision, and we need a revelation of what that is. Uh, and and I'm not the know it all, nor is Mike. I know, we're not trying to say we know it all. We're just trumpeting that there's more to this picture than you've seen. I I think to yeah to to your point. I think part of the calling for both of us is just seeing the void. Seeing? seeing seeing the need and then not just seeing it but also seeing the let's do something about it whatever whatever it is we can do about it and let's at least try to make other people aware of it yeah and one of the things I was thinking as you were saying that like what are some tools that we can kind of do with that and one of the things I could think of is um try to find some other leaders that are out there and see what they're saying, see what they're doing because we're talking about more. And and that really, that really sat with me that you're right. Um, that a really compelling vision, a really comp- compelling vision is about getting more or something where there's nothing. And so you're going to get something. And so there may be like, you know, let's say lack of freedom and you're saying, Hey, it's sweeter out there. There's all this freedom. Let's go get that. Let's go get that freedom. And that compels people. Certain people that won't compel them. Yep. They they want, they may, they maybe want less pain. And so there's some of those things depending on the nature of the vision, but you also need to allow other people to build like other leaders to build kind of micro visions within, within that. So they maybe get the bigger picture, but they might, for example, you, you might be the kind of type that's going to be like, Hey, there's more freedom out there. Somebody's going to really catch that. But then the way that they have to influence other people is say, you're now going to have less pain. Yeah. And those people are going to come because if they heard more freedom out there, they're not at that state where, or that stage where they could see that maybe that next thing is possible. They don't even believe that's even sort of possible. They think it's crazy. Or less loss. Less loss. There are some that are losing and they feel they're losing and they don't have anybody telling them, you need a bigger picture. You know, it's, it's so crazy about this too, John. That is the power of the New Testament. The New Testament is about freedom 
And the moment you read it and you get it, you catch that vision, maybe not the whole vision, but you catch that vision, you're like, chains are gone. You No, you look down, you're like, there's not even chains on me. Why right. do I even think like this? This is and, exactly. And, so and then when some, they see that, that, it causes them to do something about it. Yes, it does. So there's some people, there's, there's people I've known out there that they think, for example, again, I'm not, I, I got to be cautious about being, I feel like I need to be a little bit more cautious jumping into the Christian space because I'm kind of an outsider coming in, which is kind of good, but there's, there's more nuance there. But I see people who they think they've got it and they've been doing this a long time, but they have to do all these rituals and they yeah. have to do all these things. And it's like, but the, oh, the, the message says you don't have to do that. That's why the message is there. It's you just look down and you're like, right. well, I'm actually free. There are some people that just make me want to choke. I'll be honest with you <laughs> with their rituals. They're ritualistic. We have to have those rituals. They're sacramental. Oh, yeah. And oh. sacramental. They're sacred. And we, those rituals are very important. To You know, this is what the Roman Catholic Church is all about. Ritual, ritual, ritual. And and the problem I have with, I don't hate any, I, I love, in fact, most of my church was ex-Roman Catholics. My wife is ex-Roman Catholic. I don't have trouble with that. I have trouble with the church itself saying we are the way, the ritual way, and so now they're bound up in ritual. I, I once I get off on this, I get lost. We gotta we gotta talk. I mean, you know, we're sort I get, of, I'm getting off a sort of thing, but I, I would definitely say yeah. yeah I don't want to get off the we, track here, but we really <laughs> should call that like something other than church. We could call it church TM, or I like Christian Temple personally because to me it's it uh, unless someone's got a better description, it's a temple. And so the behave, for example, the behaviors that we we're, we're kind of talking about here with the rituals, I believe they are natural human behaviors that people have to exhibit to feel like they are doing the spiritual thing. That's the natural thing. That's not the that is not the supernatural thing. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I we'll probably have to do a little definition there. Yeah. But there, I I say this that's even more farther than what I have been saying is that. Sometimes we have to be supernaturally natural. We have to be somehow have a grip of the supernatural truth of the Christ, the church, which is his body. And we see this a little bit more in the body form rather than the organizational form, yeah. rather than the ritual form. And we, we, we have to be supernaturally natural. We're, we are yeah. natural, but sometimes uh, just natural don't cut it. Yeah, because we run into some of these natural. We're naturists. We're just naturalists. Yeah, and the naturalists and the naturists have lost their way. Dude, I'll tell you. I, I you know, I'm firmly in that space. The where a lot of people I've surrounded myself with over the years are like naturalists, or they would consider naturalists. themselves humanists, or whatever. I'm okay. With, I, and, I, I get it. And so, my experience of nature, and I've studied nature for a long time now. That. To put it to put this in perspective, um, <laughs> one of my goals I used to write it down, and it was kind of like, how do I orient the various things in my life to achieve these various goals? One of which was to become a druid. And I mean, I, I mean, like in just general sense, not yeah, in like some yeah, literal I've, sense. I've seen that, been there. So in other words, I'm like, I, I, I want to be, I want to be <laughs> so knowledgeable about nature that it is now a force that I can kind of command. That's kind of that's kind of how I think about it. Yeah. So, but having said that. People see the most thin veneer of nature that they want to see. They're like, it's so harmonious. Look at it. I'm like, <laughs> just look at the forest edges. There's chaos happening out there and plants are dying everywhere. Your con the concept of like, this is this peaceful, everything's coexisting and working is not even sort of how nature works. Nature actually thrives on death at this right interval churn as much life as it possibly can that means kill yeah and make as fertilizer so things can grow on top of yeah. that's how nature works so these people's like belief of like the harmoniousness of nature are totally completely whack yeah and 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 they're i call them uh, i i actually call these people uh flakes they're more flaky about this about nature and so look Look, I'm not going to knock naturalists because I think they've got something there. God gave us the nature, but we should. they but they don't but they have a clock saying when they got to do stuff, and they have a a, a chart 
on how they're going to do stuff, but they don't have a compass. You got to have a compass oh. to tell you which way to go. You, they don't have a compass, and so they're John, willy-nilly you everywhere know, you know in every you... nature they can be in. This gets me ticked off. And so they they don't have a compass that says, oh, north is that way. It's very important. By the way, nature knows where north and south are. But we yeah. don't have that compass, and so we get lost. There's there's another thing you need. There's two more tools you need, John. I, I love this metaphor. Let's take it a little further. <laughs> you need a, on your other wrist, you need a clock. Yeah. And on, on the other hand, you need a calendar. Yeah. And, and the reason why I say this is because you do not have unlimited time to go actually out there and influence people. You yeah. don't. Yeah. And no, the more right. lackadaisical that you are, the time that you think that you have, which has been given to you, if you don't understand this, the time that you take has been given to you by the society, by other leaders, by by people, by your wife, by your friends. They are giving you time. Yeah. And if you squander that time, you know, going waiting around to go like, if you don't have a if you don't have a, a compass, go get the compass. If you don't have a clock, go get a clock. If you yeah. don't have a sense of urgency, like this is a, this is definitely a very Marine Corps thing. If you are not running everywhere you go, you're wrong because there is crap to do. And admittedly, there's time like you got to when you when you relax, relax. Put your, you know, put it down. You know, the stop oh, when you're man, doing recreation. I say this all the stop. Time. But when it's time to go, go. But when it's time to rest, rest. Yeah. Don't don't be so oh, I got to keep going inside me. I can't really rest. No. You you have to look at and that time thing is also saying this is not the time to harvest. It's the time to plant. Yeah, you're right. And and so yep. what happens is people don't realize that we're in a Western hemisphere that tells us when it's good and when it's bad. You have to have a scope. Uh, uh, I, I call it a, 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 a uh, there's another word for scope. You got to, and that's big picture because somehow you got to realize that your compass is telling you you're going west. Swing a little bit east to get more toward the north. Or you're going south, you got to really turn all the way around to go north. So somehow, we're, I'm trying to say and provide a compass that says, uh, this, is the vi- this is where we need to go, because some people just don't have a compass. They're, they're, they're into their thing. It's great that you're into that thing or this thing or that thing, but you're going nowhere. And so, well, what do you mean by going nowhere? Well, you're still in the same situation you have been in, and you've accomplished what? What have you accomplished? It's funny. I'm like one of the probably. I don't want to. I don't want to say busiest. I'm the most go 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 person. I think of anybody. Anybody knows. Just hearing this, I'm like, this feels so painful because I'm like, I feel the same way. Even though people are like, yeah. you've accomplished so much. I'm like, you don't understand. Yeah. I need to plant two thousand apple trees. Yeah. I still don't have a plan for that. I mean, I've got a plan for probably getting about eight hundred out there. I don't have a plan for two thousand. Yeah. Well, it'll come. It will. It will come. This is. This is. You know. I know you're in that. And in that section, I'm saying, uh, sometimes you have to have someone say which way to go to get there, which way to go to get there, which way to go to get there. You. So many people have no compass, no idea where to go to get there. And and we started out with leadership and the void of leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And yet, uh, this whole area doesn't have the leadership it needs. I don't think uh, that. I mean, I could. It, it be, does. It doesn't, John. I could be arrogant in that. I don't want to say, uh, uh, you know, I'm the only one shooting this off. But you know, I like what you just said. Maybe we could get in Daniel or some other sit in between us, and and we could shift over to him and say, well, "How do you see it?" And and that sharing will open up an eye. Or two. He, I'm okay with that because we, I, I was we thinking, don't have it all. I was thinking we actually do. And there's some, definitely I wanted to do a bunch of interviews with people here. I'd love to do it with you. We can just slap them right here. Put it right here. Um, I remember what what Daniel said earlier. I love I love talking to Daniel in the mornings. Yeah. He he said um, I don't remember what the context was, but I just kind of remember the punchline, which was like uh, God gave us. Oh, he was talking about Genesis. He's like. God created all this stuff and we're supposed to be shepherds of it. And I started thinking, I was like, you know, that's a really good point. That is a call to responsibility. Yes, that's a that's... And that is the nature, I would say, also of our our connection to nature itself. 
as one of being say, a shepherd of yeah. nature. And I would say to Daniel or any other good person to come in here and interview, you got there with this wise counsel by humility. You went through something and you had you had to get to a humility to see it. God's not going to give it. He resists the proud. That's a that's a He resists the proud. He resists the proud. What do you mean? Well, the proud don't always get this information that the humble do. I, I now that you've said this, um bringing them on, our one of our core questions should be what happened to you? Yeah, yeah. But we got to bring him up to speed cuz he'll go off, you know, be on a, a plane that we're not on. And we, <laughs> we, good or bad, it might be good. But we want to bring him into the plane that we're on and say Speak to us into this plane. Tell us some more, yeah. because that's good for us. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that that. Please, Mister, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying we haven't got a lot to offer. I think we got enough to wake you up to we, the vision. Yeah, we absolutely to wake you up to the big picture. But there are others that bring in a, a, a force of thinking, a force of thought, that help us go. Oh, we. I mean, you and I both need to go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. so that's what I figured out when I was writing my book is um, the reason why I wrote my book was uh, the first name of it was uh, Conscious Leadership, which I've got yeah. the yeah. book Conscious Leadership, yeah. which the the year I was putting my book out, and I was kind of waiting for like an editor to, 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 to edit my book and all this stuff. The year that it came out. The CEO of Whole Foods released his book called Conscious Leadership. And I was like, no way. Son of a, uh, you stole my book title. Because the purpose of the book was actually to wake up unconscious leadership. Yeah. Which maybe that'd be a good a good term. But to what you're saying, there are other people out there that are engaged. Because again, if you understand the elements, any person who is trying to figure out whether consciously or subconsciously, how to influence what people do, their behaviors, yeah. and what they believe yeah. is engaged in leadership in some form. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've got some better future that they believe in, whether they know even know what that is. The, the moment they're engaged in that, they are now actually a leader. Yeah. So sometimes when you say leadership to people, it, it just rolls off them. They have no idea what you're no even talking about, and yet you are talking to a leader themselves. Yeah. And let me say this to you. I, I, one of my sons that I took hunting... I said, what's the first thing about hunting you need to have? And he said, guns. And I said, okay, what else? And, and he said, well, 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 you have to have camouflage on. Okay, no, what else? Uh, better bring a knife in case we get one. We got to cut him. Okay, what else? And, and he gave me all these things that we should have as a hunter. And I told him, you missed the main thing. Well, what's that? I said, you have to have awareness. You can't walk into a woods and not be aware of your surroundings. Yeah. You have to be aware and I like what, what, uh, something you said that made me think about this. There are other people that are conscious leader and unconscious. An unconscious leader is not aware. No, they're not. They're not aware. They're, they're on their way doing it unconsciously, but they need to be aware of of the picture, of the vision, of the bigger it, picture, it, so that they can kind of have a, a compass. Yes. <laughs> and on what, it goes. I, I was gonna. I was going to add to that. What they have is they have a vision. So they have actually caught a vision. They're seeing they, something. They don't have the compass. They and the book the is the compass. And the reason why you need the compass is because when you're unconsciously leading, there's a lot of things that you're doing that you don't understand that you're doing that are costing you to get there. Time. And you time costing you time. You, yes. You do not understand what you're actually doing. And once you understand what you're actually doing... You can't be aware of everything all the time, but I will definitely tell you from actual experience that the day you're like, I am a leader first, and then I'm going to enter into the world as a leader, and you remind yourself of that. I probably need to get like that dude in my hand or something like that. The <laughs> moment I started, I, I like, I left the workforce to basically start my own business and farm and all this kind of stuff. And then I came back to the workforce. When I came back to the workforce, that's when I had st already started writing my leadership book. I already consumed like an ungodly amount of leadership material and I was on the leadership kick. And when I showed up as a, just a regular software engineer, flew right to the top. And the reason is, is because I was doing something that other people weren't doing. Yep. I'm looking at other people and going like, okay, we've got to accomplish this. These three people, every time they touch anything, they just mess it up. So what I need to do, and it wasn't quite this level of conscious, but it was kind of close. It was like, I should probably take over all of their jobs 
this whole thing over here is really complicated. So I'm going to give it to this guy who's on it and I can just say, hey, you're the best. Go do it. And that's going to motivate him to go do it. And we accomplished it. And it wasn't because of the managers or any of that crap. It's because all of a sudden there was a leader yeah. who was at the bottom of the food chain. Yeah. And I'm saying that you were kind of like an unconscious leader yes. and you've gotten more and more aware. And so now you have awareness. Well, what kind of book would you write now with the awareness you have now? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so suddenly, well, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you. The first thing I would do <laughs> is I would take my book and I would dust it off and I would slap a vision chapter. Revise, revise. Yeah, yeah. The the thing that I did, I totally missed in that book. I I got a little bit of the essence, but it, it's it's so important is yeah. vision. Yeah, it's vision. Yeah, it's and, actually what we're talking well, that's about what right now. That's what revision, revised means. I guess that's true. It's See? got a new. It's got a new Revise, vision. revision. And so I. I mean, I, if I have a tattoo, I'm, it's going to be. I'm going to have a tattoo. It says "Kill It," because I mean, there are so many things in my life that I'm trying to kill. Yeah. And it does say "kill." Uh, by the way, in Colossians it says "kill uncleanness, kill anger, kill selfishness." Kill. It says "kill." Mortify your members that are not like Christ in you. Kill them. Because they just keep lingering and cause you problems, and you, I need to kill them. I'm trying so hard to kill certain things in me, lusts and desires for this, and, for yeah. that. and I'm trying to eating too much. I'm trying to kill those things, and I pray for the help of God to kill them. So I'm gonna if I do one, it's gonna be kill it, so it can remind me. Maybe I better put it right on my. So head, John, so. the real question is, is why didn't you join the Marine Corps? Because <laughs> I assure you, every well, Marine. Well, my uncle wanted me to, but <laughs> when, when you joined I was the, in the Marine... Vietnam War, and, they, and my dad said no. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, 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 it's so funny talking to the different services because none of them are even close to the the nature of the Marine Corps. Like, so when you go to boot camp. Every time, so it's always like a call and response. So, and part of the call and response is to make sure you're aware because they're going to say a certain thing. Awareness. You got to say the thing. And so it becomes muscle memory. They want you to be muscle memory. So you're acting like one body. That's the whole purpose of it. But they're smart. I'm telling you, the Marine Corps, do not mess with the Marine Corps. They are adamant about decentralized leadership going down the chain. Clear vision going up and down. So they're telling all the way to Lance Corporal, the general is going, this is what we're doing as part of the big picture. And then all the way down to lieutenant, the lieutenant's going, this is what the general is doing. Our piece is this part here. You, Lance Corporal, your piece is that right there. They're going to be doing this. So you're like, oh, I know what everybody's supposed to be doing. So it's like, if maybe I accomplish my thing, I could hop over here. And they know they're all the general, but they have their role and they have their space. And so they delegate those leadership roles all the way down to where there's one dude in charge of two people. And it's the exact same as that lieutenant in charge of the three squads. It's the exact same. and But it's just at the different levels. And so what I wanted to say here is so they're, they're teaching these kind of innate mechanics. <laughs> After every single thing, like the the when you say like go, so it's like, okay, now we're going to go do the thing. The response is Kill. <laughs> yeah. So everything, almost everything that you say, you probably say kill a hundred trillion times in boot camp. Ready? Go. Kill. 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 And so it's all, all well, you mine do would, is say my is kill. My tattoo would be kill it. And you know, <laughs> you know, I want to say to you people out there that are listening to us or checking us out, this is why I can't do this by myself because in him, Mike, I see that, uh, 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 What's that word I've been trying? Not scope, but it is scope, but it's the window that he sees things in. He looks in the window from this side of the building, you come up and I look in the window from the other side of the building. And you need to know that if you only had me, you go, yeah, the heck with John. He's all spiritual. He's all this and that. But then when you got this guy over here, didactic and, and disciplined and thinking in a different way, you have no excuse. I'm looking into the camera. You got no excuse. You have got to hear us. We have a bigger picture that we've seen and we want to share it. We want to say with a clarion call, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going off this way, but we want you to get this because this is why we're doing it. It's not just for our, we're not getting anything out. Nobody pays us $100,000 after we walk out of here. Nobody pays us anything. We just see with our hearts the desire uh, to get people to see not only microscope and telescope, but that that there's a there's a void out here and we're crying about it. 
Well, I, I'm, I'm going to, I agree with you, but I disagree. I am getting stuff out of this because if this wasn't valuable information, then I couldn't. Even the experience of talking to you, it's kind of clarifying my thinking on these things. It's helping me to kind of map these things over. And that's why I think it's so important that they actually watch this because yeah. by, by watching it, they're going to take, it. yes, by hearing it, actually more, more hearing it than, than watching it. You're right. Yeah. The, the watching it, maybe add a little bit. You can kind of, well, that gives us. You can see a little bit of the energy, but admittedly, the it is more about the vocals. Yeah, yeah. But they're going to map this to what they're doing, and wherever they're going, whatever they're they're actually being called that they can't kind of hear, they're going to be able to hear it so much louder and clearer. It's just like the video I'm getting ready to release that every, I'm going to share everybody about the experience last week where we did that uh, trip to Asheville, that expedition. Dude, we went armed to Asheville. I mean, armed to the teeth. I had professional security with me who was for, like former special forces. We went down there and we ran a military operation in Asheville. And so to make that happen. Well, people need to hear about that. So to make that happen, dude, it was it was ops. And what, what people don't understand and I can only try to convey with like ears is like I can just try to convey my experiences being called to do that. I didn't want to do it. As with all of these things, Normally, and you may have this too, you don't want to do your calling. Oh, that's I, what, oh, oh boy. Is yeah, that, I know I know that'll set it off, but we're, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to tie you, this up and bring it up you, again next I, week. I would borderline say you it's almost guaranteed that it's your calling when you don't want to do it. Because that's the thing. It's calling on your door and you're like, no, thank you. Which you were saying, like, work on computers. No, I need to find somebody else who's gonna do that. Yeah. Not me. But the um I didn't want to do it. I said, no, uh, we're going to wait and we're going to have this person come and all that. And it's like, we don't have the time. The time is now. And I was like, oh my God, they're right. And so I'm immediately <laughs> start calling people on the phone and I'm in the middle of the day trying to organize this expedition and like getting logistics in line. And I literally was on the phone with one person or another for like six hours trying to make this thing happen. I'm dealing with Christine, literally all this stuff in parallel. And by the time I went to bed at one o'clock, I was exhausted. And yeah. got like two hours of sleep and then executed at 4.30 a.m. on the dot. And, and and you know, Mike, this is a, a funny thing. My heart as a pastor and a <laughs> teacher uh, and that gifting that I have, uh, it drives me crazy so much that I want to get expressed and to share and to get across this kind of thing that I see. And, and now we're, you and I are, are actually uh, breaking it down and dealing with it and sharing it out there. Uh, but I, I hate to say this because someone's going to misinterpret this, yeah. but I hate it. Yeah, yeah. I hate it. It's not fun for me because it's so frustrating to get it across and not get it across in a way that just gives it to you. you and I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I can't teach it. It's not taught. It's caught. And you just have to catch it. And you know what? All this stuff we're talking about, we're going to have to deal more with this next week because this is we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Pretty soon, we're going to start sh getting down to the mud and the silt and the crap on the bottom Yeah. because there's so much to this, so much. And I've dealt with it in my mind for so long. I'm tired of it, and I hate it. And yet, I, ha I have no choice. You don't have any choice. I have no choice. You don't have a choice. We have no choice. So one of the, a cool cool thing, you know, to, we'll say kind of kind of kind of pull back a little bit. A really cool thing I learned at um, I did an MBA. You make fun of me. Uh, <laughs> it was an executive MBA that was compressed, and so we could just get it done and over with. Okay. But uh, I learned I learned a couple good things, and uh, probably three or four things that were totally worth it. One of which was accounting. That's why I wanted to go. I had had really good accounting experience, but it was like. There was a couple things I needed to tie up. Yep. Now I got it. I got it. So, but one of the things that uh, I left with was a pattern, like a really good pattern for, um, I don't know, um, coming together with a good, an actually good idea. And the, the pattern is this acceptance of the, uh, I would call it a sine wave. That's kind of like a mathematical way of looking at it, but um, um, this coming and going, uh, expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting. And what it is, is when we come together, we, we have a bunch of brainstorm, we throw out all the different perspectives. We then need to break apart. We then individually 
need to come up with our own things, which is what, what you'll do when you, when you stop watching this. You'll come up with your own things. And then when you come back, you bring it back into the circle with other people who have yes. got their own thing and they bring it back. And then you rinse and cycle and repeat. Right. And that's a very powerful way to gain a clear understanding of something. Yes, yes. And and what's happening right here, right now, as I see it, is the pond, the rock hit the pond and the ripple effect. Yeah. You see, you're, we're causing a ripple effect. And then you take it and you go and you get your own thing and you come back and you throw a stone in the ripples upon ripple. The ripple effect is a happening. And that's my desire that the ripple will touch you. And you go, hey, who rocked the boat? Yeah, that's right. We're rocking the boat here. But we're going to have to continue this later because i got to go. But, yep. but, but we had a good long discussion on this. And this may be the very thing that when you hear this one, you go, whoa, whoa. These guys are, 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 are touched by this and are try they're emphatic. They're passionate. They're, they're, they get it and they want it. Although we are frustrated that we share this all and these people – and we call them knuckleheads that don't get it that we're working with. And you know how many knuckleheads I've worked with in my life? Knuckleheads. And I have to keep working with these knuckleheads. Yeah. It's difficult. It is difficult. It's difficult. But I'm anyway. Sure, I'm sure um, the people who are watching this, I, I, I think, if anything, this kind of stuff, they're going to get. This is going to hit them that it's like, yeah, I, well, deal, we I deal with that. We hope so. So, Amen. Um, that, that's, uh, that's Catch the Vision. Uh, we're definitely interested in your comments, especially if anything uh, oh here sparks you. Definitely shoot it out there. We'd love to hear about it. Please. What I, what I really want to do is I actually want to chop this video up and get it out there and get those sound bites. Yeah. Because I think I think that would definitely help the kind of to get the smaller Amen. little things. And uh, we do this every Saturday, although today's Friday, every Saturday at 8 a.m. And uh, we go and repost it out on YouTube. And uh, we normally do this live on Facebook. Uh, one day, maybe it'd be nice if we could actually do this live in multiple different areas, but that's not yet. And, uh, other than that, uh, we're, we want you to catch the vision. And, uh, yes. I think w I would say, I'd speak for both of us and say, we're, we're your humble servants to try to help you, uh, catch that vision. That's right. We, that's right. So, all Amen. right. We'll see you. Blessings.